Hi, this is Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending June the 18th, 2021. Interesting uh, way to start the day. The inflation talk just keeps continuing. So this week, I thought that we would look at the inflation impact on seniors, that seniors being defined as those on, on fixed income and the segment of the population from age 62 and, and on and up from there. Just taking a step backwards for a sec, remember to like and subscribe if you like these uh, weekly updates. Uh, that helps us share the information with more and more people. I'm passionate about this area and uh, we're, we're, we'd love to share with as many people as possible. Share with your, your friends and family, as well as going to our website, assetguidancegroup.com, and signing up for our weekly uh, newsletter so you can read a lot of this information uh, in written form. Uh, the inflation news this week is repositioning in the bond markets, the yield curve flattening because of uh, the head of the uh, St. Louis uh, Fed, uh, Bullard, uh, statements this morning uh, talking about uh, the even scooting up faster than what uh, Fed Chair Powell said on Wednesday about uh, probably raising rates now in late 2022 as opposed to 20. 23, as, as the chair had said, um, and, and are also talking about removing a lot of, of the various aspects of their, of their purchasing programs that they've been doing uh, for some time now to get us through these crises. So that changed the trade. You can see in the email what I say about what it's done with the equities markets, but it's that absolutely flattening out the curve uh, on, the, on the bond markets. So interesting time. Uh, that all means that inflation is a factor that we're going to have to deal with here, if not for the next two to three years, probably two to five years and perhaps beyond. We'll see how that turns out. But in terms of planning, it behooves us to look seriously at these issues because inflation erodes purchasing power for everyone, but it disproportionately affects seniors, as studies have shown, uh, since uh, really 1982. And so uh, Social Security gives a cost of living adjustment. For a lot of people, that's the only increase that they have other than letting somebody like me manage their money and get them additional increases uh, in money as they go along. Um, past performance is no indication of future results, but uh, setting aside certain sleeves that have potential for increasing income and increasing the pot as time goes by. Um, but for a lot of people, uh, Social Security is the only thing. Everything else is a level amount that they're going to have. And Social Security bases those COLAs, cost of living adjustment, on uh, the consumer price index for all uh, urban and wage earners and clerical workers. It's called CPI-W. Uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics also started an experimental index about seven, eight years ago, around 2013 to 2014, uh, at least, and it's called the CPI-E, and what they did is reweight to focus on uh, uh, the different weights on other areas that impact seniors, they, uh, defined as age 62 and above, more so than the general uh, urban consumer uh, at large, and so those primarily uh, are medical care costs and housing costs. So I thought we'd take a couple of minutes and look at each of those areas. And what we found in the last study, now we'll go back and look at this, but the, this week the Bureau of Labor Statistics website was down, won't be back up till June the 22nd. But right now, the best studies available uh, that are most reliable show that the CPIE has outpaced the CPIW by around 0.2 to 0.27 percent per year since 2014. And uh, uh, these studies are being done by people who are urging Social Security to use the CPI-E as a foundation for cost of living adjustments as opposed to the CPI-W. But if we use that data and then compare the cost of medical care, so we know, we know that, that, that disproportionately inflation is impacting seniors, but then if we look at medical care, because that's the greatest one, and just compare for the last 10 years, so from 2010 to 2021, using 2010 as a base year, and so we put $1,000 on that calculation, 
we see that in 2021, medical care costs are 34.88% higher than they were in 2010. That transforms into a compound annual growth rate of 3.04%, or a yearly uh, raw average, uh, you know, uh, of 3.49%. But uh, let's use the 304 uh, and compared to an overall inflation rate of 1.64, so that's almost twice medical care for seniors versus that for the average urban worker. Now, Genworth is a huge carrier, and they do an annual cost of care survey. So now, I gave you the 10-year uh, data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The survey that, that Genworth statistics came back with for a five-year uh, annual growth rates for health care are as follows. For homemaker services, 3.8%. For home health aids uh, services, 3.71%. Now, these are fairly close in agreement with that compound annual growth rate of 3.04% or that linear raw average of 3.49%. And you're starting to see that there's some agreement between the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics 10-year and, 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 and Genworth's uh, private survey for five-year they're starting to see a lot of agreement there that lets us know we're, we're using some fairly good data here. Adult day health care, 1.45%. Assisted living facilities, or ALFs is how we refer to those, 3.62%. And then nursing home care, 3% even for the five-year period. So if we just use that 3% and say, look, let's project out into the future 10 years and see what these costs might be for planning purposes, uh, we, we get some interesting information. So the national, uh, Genworth reports the national median monthly rate for an ALF is $4,300 a month. And for nursing home, $7,756 a month for a semi-private room, $8,821 a month for a private room. Uh, from experience, let me let me assure you, if it's all, all possible, you want a, a private room for your uh, for your loved one um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, but uh, it works out much much better uh, if at all possible. So these are national median. That means exact. You know, ha the median is half the population is below, half the population is above. Now, if uh, in in Metro Georgia. Metro Atlanta, Georgia, were a little bit higher than, than the, those numbers, but let's just let's just use these for the time being here. If we use that data of a three percent growth rate for ten years from now, we would expect an ALF to cost sixty one hundred and thirty six dollars. Uh, a semi private nursing home room to be around ten thousand four hundred dollars, and a private nursing home room. Uh, would be around just shy of eleven thousand nine hundred, so eleven thousand eight hundred and fifty-five dollars a month in ten years. So we need to budget then as we plan for these kind of costs, and somewhere between six thousand and twelve thousand dollars a month is where we know we're likely to hit, because statistics say seven out of ten of us, no matter no matter the seven out of ten of us are going to use long-term care at some point. OK, and uh, most of us would like to stay home, uh, but you see that those stay at home costs inflate even faster because of labor issues. So a lot of times life doesn't give us that choice. And even if it does, the stay at home choice isn't necessarily the least expensive one. Speaking of home, let's talk about housing costs just a bit. The reason the housing costs impact seniors is uh, more than the general population is primarily the fact of the limited resources available, the fact of fixed income, stated loosely. Um, so housing costs include mortgage, rental payments, but really utility expenses in the cases of wild weather events like what happened in Texas last winter, but primarily maintenance and repairs in my ex experience. So when those types of, of, of bursts of costs come along, they have to be dealt with if you only have a fixed pot then you have to bring it out. It's usually from an IRA or a 401k, and then we're paying taxes on that money. And in the best of times, you're you're on a market up here. Uh, in the in the worst uh, scenarios, you're you're having to pull that money out, and the markets are also going down, so the markets are decreasing that money, and it creates what we call a sequence of return 
uh, risk a situation and, and it, it can just be devastating. It can start a death spiral for your retirement. So I hope I've laid out now why it's very important to plan for these types of events. And we dedicate sleeves of assets available in order to address these uh, situations now earlier on so that when the time comes down the road, you're uh, in, in a great situation to deal with it. It's much easier to, to deal with a crisis when you've already got the plan and money set aside and in place for it. So there's a number of different ways to do these things, uh, a myriad of tools available to us. But um, I will suffice it to say that uh, enjoy speaking with you about this. If you're already a client, well, this is one of the first things that we do. If you're not yet a client, go to assetguidancegroup.com. Click on that schedule uh, a, a, an opinion, a second opinion meeting with me, and uh, that way you can use the robot to fix a mutually convenient date and time for us to get together. Uh, and, and if you want to talk to any of the other clients, I'd be glad to, uh, if, if they're willing to, to, to give you information, we get references and testimonials that are, that are glowing reports, I'm very pleased to say. So uh, look forward to helping you as we can, like I said, passionate about this area because I've lived through it in my own family and I, I don't think that other people need to go through the hardships that uh, we did because we learn and then we pass on the knowledge which is what we would ask you to do with the video like uh, subscribe and share with friends and family to help us spread this information I look forward to meeting with you if I haven't met you already and in any event we'll look forward to an interesting week next week and we'll see how it all turns out and I'll see you then